Hi everyone. Today we are going to discuss about Article 2 of UCP 600. Article 2 of UCP 600 is about definitions for certain terms. To be precise, here we are going to talk about 14 terms. These terms, when you understand the meaning behind it, it will be easier to know where they plug in in the context of a letter of credit. Be mindful in when you're talking about a letter of credit, when you're speaking or writing anything related to that. In that context, you need to use these definitions correctly. You cannot use your own terms. That's why the six, uh, UCP 600 had clearly defined these uh, terms so that we could use in the practical world when we are dealing with letter of credits. So let's get into each of them now. First, we have advising bank. So advising bank is the bank that will advise this letter of credit to the beneficiary on the request of the issuing bank. Now here this bank gets the letter of credit from the issuing bank and after receiving it from the issuing bank either they can decide to add their confirmation or they could decide just to advise the letter of credit itself. And if they decide just to advise the letter of credit as it is, then the bank will only be an advising bank. If they think or if they decide that they need to add their confirmation and then advise the letter of credit, then advising bank will also become the confirming bank. Next, we have applicant. Applicant is the initiator of this entire letter of credit. How does he or she become the initiator? This applicant is the first person who makes the request to issue this letter of credit. So we can say that this particular applicant is actually the importer in the transaction. Because he or she needs to bring down the goods. To bring down the goods, they need to open a letter of credit. So he will be the first initiator or the initiation point to create this letter of credit. Next, we have banking days. Banking days is a day where the bank is regularly open at the place at which they act subject to these rules is to be performed. So technically speaking, it's a day where bank is regularly open. But the definition goes on to say that at a place at which an act subject to these rules is to be performed. So a banking day should be a day where the bank is regularly open and at the usual place where they usually adhere to these rules and regulations. Okay. Next we have beneficiary. Beneficiary is the ultimate entity or the end point of a letter of credit. What do you mean by end point? It is in favor of this person that the entire letter of credit is being issued. So, technically speaking, this is the exporter. Now, when we discuss or talk about letter of credit, importer takes up the role of an applicant, exporter takes up the role of a beneficiary. Complying presentation. So, complying presentation is a presentation that you make in accordance with three things. It needs to be in line with the terms and conditions of the LC. It needs to be in line with the applicable provisions of UCP 600 and it needs to be in line with the international standard banking practice. Now international standard banking practice is a, uh, a further extension to the LC where they further talk about these terms and the regulations involved. We will discuss that as well when we move on after we finish UCP 600 and UCP 522. Then we'll move on to the other regulations we have on trade. So whenever you're talking about a complying presentation, remember there are three things that you need to comply with. Most of the students think, okay, complying presentation means the presentation or the documents that you present to your advising bank has to be in line with the credit only. No, not only the letter of credit, it needs to be in line with the provisions of UCP 600. 
provisions of UCP 600 and ISBP. So the very first one, initial one it needs to match is the terms and conditions of LC. So that's the first thing that you need to comply with. And after you ascertain that yes, it complies with the terms and conditions of the LC, then you check whether it's in compliant with UCP 600 and ISBP. Next, we have confirmation. So I told you when we were discussing advising bank, confirmation, we are here talking about just the act of giving the confirmation, not about a confirming bank, which is coming next. Here, when you talk about confirmation, you are speaking about a definite undertaking taken by the confirming bank in addition to the issuing bank to honor or negotiate a complying presentation. Now, remember the primary responsibility to honor lies in the hand of issuing bank because they are the bank who are issuing this letter of credit and all the others are acting on their behalf. I told you the issuing bank will route the credit, letter of credit to the advising bank. When the advising bank receives it, they could check the authenticity of that and they could decide for themselves whether they are going to merely advise the credit as it is to the beneficiary or they are going to add a confirmation to the letter of credit and then advise to the beneficiary. So what do you mean by adding a confirmation? They are giving a further definite undertaking from their part as well. So now not only the issuing bank, even the advising bank is adding a confirmation and saying, look here, if you provide a, a complying presentation, we will honor and negotiate before it moves to the issuing bank. Remember, moment the advising bank adds the confirmation, their role becomes or their term changes into confirming bank. Confirming bank is the bank that adds the confirmation to the credit upon the issuing bank's authorization or request. So on their request, but the bank can decide whether to add their confirmation or not. Credit. The term credit means any arrangement, however named or described, that is irrevocable. Now that's the key term here. This cannot be revoked and thereby constitute a definite undertaking of the issuing bank to honor a complying presentation. Now here, why are we saying it as irrevocable? When we go down into other articles, you will see if you if you are issued a LC, you can only revoke the LC if the main three parties involved in the LC agree upon. If they don't agree, you can't. So by the nature of it, we define it as an irrevocable uh, arrangement. Now, I understand certain students confuse this with the term credit as in terms of a loan facility. But in the context of UCP 600, when they talk about credit, they are referring to letter of credit. Honor. Honor means to pay at site if the credit is available at site payment to incur a deferred payment undertaking and pay at maturity if the credit is available of by deferred payment, to accept a bill of exchange drawn by the beneficiary and pay at maturity if the credit is available by acceptance. So here the term honor depends, about the, uh, depends on the terms in which the credit is available. If the credit is available by site, the term honor means you need to immediately pay when the complying presentation is made. So at site, you will make your payment. If your credit is available by deferred payment, then the term honor will there mean to incur a deferred payment undertaking. So initially, at the time you make the complying presentation, you give a deferred payment undertaking. You agree to pay at a later date. And then you actually abide by that undertaking and pay at maturity. Thirdly, if the letter of credit is available by acceptance, 
then the term honor means that on that particular day we are complying presentation is made you will accept the bill of exchange which is drawn by the beneficiary and at the end of the relevant uh, period that has been mentioned you will pay at maturity so these three you need to remember a letter of credit can be available at sight by deferred payment and even by acceptance so when these three availability is there the term honor will change accordingly issuing bank issuing bank means the bank that actually issues this letter of credit but remember they don't issue on a ad hoc basis initial request has to come from the applicant then only then only then they would issue the letter of credit another instant where without a request from the applicant they will issue a letter of credit is when they are acting on own behalf let's say bank a wants to bring down certain items and for their own business purposes or let's say for expansion purpose then they themselves can open their lc so that is situation 2 so on only then they you won't see you will see them both in the role of an applicant and as a issuing bank so issuing bank can get the role of an applicant if they are going to open the credit on their own behalf if not request must be made request from applicant needs to be coming that's like the initiation point negotiation negotiation means purchase by the nominated bank of drafts drawn on a bank other than the nominated bank and or documents under a complying presentation by advancing or agreeing to advance funds to the beneficiary on or before the banking day on which reimbursement is due to the nominated bank now in this structure of letter of credit sometimes you could uh, issuing bank could nominate a bank to negotiate to honor the particular letter of credit when a complying presentation is made to them so that the beneficiary doesn't have to wait until the documents reach the issuing bank so here the term negotiation means when the complying presentation when they make a complying presentation that would of course have a draft involved now if it's at site you don't have to negotiate you will immediately honor it if it's through a draft at that particular time the nominated bank could purchase those drafts by which they will either agree to pay or agree to advance the funds on or before the day in which reimbursement is due from the issuing bank so remember if the nominated bank is negotiating and paying out the amount has to reimburse to them from the issuing bank so prior to that day they will agree prior or on that particular day they uh, they will agree to advance or agree to give out the funds to the beneficiary so that act is called negotiation so who does it nominated bank so nominated bank is the bank with which credit is available or any bank in case of credit is available with any bank presentation presentation means either the delivery of documents under a credit to the issuing bank or nominated bank or the documents so delivered so here first we talk about what a complying presentation is if it needs to be a complying presentation your presentation of document your delivery of documents needs to be compliant with three things now here we are talking about presentation as it is so here presentation means you delivering the documents under the credit to the issuing bank or nominated bank or the documents just so delivered to such bank is also named as presentation for a presentation to be complying you need to be in compliant with the three things we just discussed finally presenter presenter could be a beneficiary the person who 
you know got the documents made the documents uh, and now you know submitting that to the bank now after they submit to the nominated bank or let's say the confirming bank from there on documents get sent to the issuing bank so even the nominated or the advising bank would be a presenter themselves and any other party that makes the presentation so remember presenter doesn't have to be only the beneficiary in addition to the beneficiary you will have the bank and any other party that will make a presentation now we are you know the structure we just witnessed it in the previous video this is like the flow chart on how the letter of credit works so here let's plug in the terms so that you can understand this person is the importer over here is the exporter so of course importer will be the applicant the initiator on whose request the letter of credit is going to be issued seller will be the beneficiary there you could see the lc application made to the issuing bank and from the issuing bank you could see lc is being issued to the advising or the confirming bank so you know what the advising bank does if they advise the credit on the if they advise the credit on the request if they advise the credit on the request of the issuing bank yes then they become the advising bank uh, or if they add their confirmation to it then they become the confirming bank so once they uh, decide on it they will advise the lc to the beneficiary you could see number 4 they advise the lc to the beneficiary now this lc advice can either come with a confirmation or not that's up to the advising bank so after the lc gets advised they will ship the goods to the applicant and prepare the documents needed and then you could see the documents get presented now here it's just a presentation that they make so from the beneficiary documents gets presented to the advising or the confirming bank here so here at this point you can't say whether it's a compliant presentation it's just a mere presentation and beneficiary acts as the presenter here so after they receive the documents advising or confirming bank will verify whether it's a compliant presentation and based on that they will i the make the they will make the payment to the beneficiary if it's a compliant presentation and then they will submit the documents back to the issuing bank so at this point when we are talking about 7a there the presenter is the advising or the confirming bank that's why when we are defi defining the term presenter they said it could be beneficiary or a bank or any other party making the presentation so once the documents gets presented to the issuing bank they will also verify whether it's a confirming presentation and if it is a confirming presentation immediately payment is made to the advising or the confirming bank and then the documents are released to the applicant so the applicant if it's at site will have to pay at site to the issuing bank if it's a by deferred payment or by acceptance they will either sign the drafts or agree at on that particular day and then pay at maturity this is the entire structure of lc and we plugged in certain terms that we just understood from article number 2 I hope it was helpful for you. We'll meet again in another video. Thank you so much for listening in. Subscribe to Learning Business for more videos.